Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MC Emacs. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, we have Noah Bethel, the Vice President of Product Development with us. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And I am Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And Noah, our customers have come through for us again and given us this great case study, moisture, good for plants, never good for electric motors. Gotta like that phrase. Well, that must mean there's water somewhere in the distribution system, so we're going to find out where that's at. Let's do. This is the motor size. You see it's a 2.3 kV motor uh, and 2,000 horsepower. Yeah, that's a good size motor and certainly one that you don't want water running through. No, you don't want water in that insulation system. But I'm going to take us right here. This is new. Our MC Gold 3.0 is recently released. and it really takes our six vault zones and puts them into a circular or ocular view to make it a little easier for the technician to take a look and see what's going on. Yeah, the ocular fault zone there is very interactive and has been one of the, the, the key interest points for the people looking at the new software. And in this situation, it, you can see the color coordination. You can click on the fault zone. Uh, we're focusing on insulation as red, and you've heard us say that red is bad and no differently here than there. So red is bad, we're focused in on the insulation fault zone as you mentioned, and the reason being is we're at 12, uh, 12 7 or 7 meg. Yeah. And this is not good. I think the IEEE minimum for a motor this size is going to be like 100 mega ohms, and that's a uh, far cry from that. So as always, we're, we're comparing to our standard test, and in this case here, we can see that over time, we're trending lower. We're down to 0.7 where we call the red flag to do some more testing. Yeah, this is getting to the point where now you're, you're approaching a trip hazard, a potential fire hazard. You really should be doing something about it. Right, so what would be the next uh, best step is let's go and take a, do a polarization index test and let's see what does it look like over 10 minutes. And as suspected, when water is, is, is in the play, you, do, you expect to see these low values of, of resistance to ground on the, on the, vertical, on the, you know, the vertical axis, uh, but flat as it can be and way under the 2, the two PI value. And often the next step is to go down to the motor. Let's break apart the motor and the, the power circuit to verify where is this issue at. Right, like in war, divide and conquer. Let's separate things and see where the source of the root cause is. Right, uh, and lo and behold, we go down to the motor circuit and we find this in front of us. We didn't have to divide it. We can see the, the rust, it looks like, and uh, all the byproducts of water uh, associated with the uh, electrical system. Oh and yeah, this is going to be a conductive nightmare. Yeah. At some point, obviously, it's going to find a path to ground, and based on the historical trending, it already has. And another look in, uh, close the, the jacket there that covers it, and then a closer look to see just how deeply that went in. Mm. Yeah, this has been wicking in for some time. So it's been wicking in. So we did a, a follow-up test and we can see that it's not necessarily better. So maybe the water has seeped a little bit deeper up. We try to cut as much away as possible, but it's above the minimum spec. Right, so now what they've done is even though that, that you know, they're clear in the site specification apparently, and, and with history this makes them comfortable to be able to start the motor, but sh you know, like you just said, uh, obviously this is not a, a clean, 100% dry system and it's not gonna get any better. And without this motor, the plant doesn't run. So you're gonna take your risks. Right. To start it up. We're going to be productive for, uh, for another round and then look ahead at maybe uh, replacing the entire cable, which would be the next recommendation. So in this case, we found out the conduit seal had been compromised, allowing the water to seep down, wicks up, uh, and uh, causing the overheating and the uh, rusting that was occurring on that cable. So as always, you go down, you direct to, to check it out to see about where the problem is and, and correct the problem. And the reason being is right here, cost savings. If you can't run the plant, $250,000 per day. You can buy a few cables with $250,000. Yeah, and then saving on the repair of that motor had it failed. Absolutely, we were able to do an external repair and keep the same motor running. Uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see a polarization index values on both the cables and the motor separately and do all that together. Bottom line is, uh, you know, if, if they potentially extended the life of this motor and, and offer the price of a cable. Right, and it potentially extended the productivity of the plant, which is very important. Stockholders will find that to be a good thing. Right. Well, we want to thank you for spending your time with us, and we hope this has been of value to you. 
Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please, please feel free to give us a call at 813-621-6463 or come see us at www.pdma.com or look at us on our YouTube channel now. Yeah, so don't forget the there. channel. That's a big deal. We push our videos out on YouTube. And as always, be safe out there, and we'll see you next time.